Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Four Dads Podcast with your host, myself, Teeds, and Don Julio. Uh, today, we are talking straight golf like we always do, and we are going to kind of see what Julio wants to start with because you got a lot of things that have happened over the last few days, especially with the PGA Championship coming up. But what is what topic do you want to start with today? I don't know, man. The one thing that keeps popping up all the time, uh, at least within the golf world, is uh, – the latest news of Rory McIlroy's divorce and people are thinking he's about to come out hot. People are saying, watch out Valhalla. He's may go on a tear. <laughs> and I don't know what it was, but I, I, I texted you earlier in the week saying that his first divorce uh, or him calling off his engagement, I think is what it was. Yes. I did um, look it up and I was like, I didn't know it was yeah, divorcing, but yeah, that's yeah, what it was. Right, right, right. Him calling off his engagement. He came back and he, he won that players. I think he won a player's championship. He won, he went on a tear of just winning some some great tournaments, um, and everyone's just like, "Yeah, maybe." I don't know. I I just I kind of feel I kind of feel bad for him because it's like you know he just had he just had a kid. Yeah, uh, now there's a kid involved. It's like, yeah, now there's a kid involved, and it's just kind of like it's one of those unfortunate things where now the kid's going to see a broken home, you know. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I just think that that's tough, but I don't know, man. I, I just feel like. I feel like this is, I feel like, I feel like it's just a big reset for, for, for Rory, because again, you know, the whole thing that we spoke about with like him hopping onto the board, him doing all this other stuff, you know, it was really pulling him away from golf. And now he's just trying to cut all ties, which is, I mean, it's a selfish move, but I guess you guys got to do what's best for your career. Yeah. I mean, you bring up a good point, especially with the last time you kind of pulled, called something off on basically an engagement or an engagement, basically a divorce, and he went on a tear. But like you mentioned before, with a kid, he doesn't have not the responsibility of having a kid where he could just dive everything into golf and not listen to anybody else. You know, literally just go like, you know, dive into your work kind of a thing like anybody else would. You have a kid now. And because of that, that's going to be on your mind. And obviously he played really well. He won the Wells Fargo last weekend, you know. Um, and he's trending upwards and Scotty Scheffler, congrats to him, by the way, became a father, Bennett Scheffler. Uh, hopefully they're going to call him Ben because that poor kid does not want to hear Bennett all day. That's yeah, but he's a dad now. He hasn't played in a few weeks and people are still thinking that Scotty Scheffler is going to, you know, hit the ground running right where he left off, which is possible, but We'll see. I'll talk about that later because we're on Roy McIlroy. I mean, we'll see. I mean, this I, I do think this is probably the best chance for Roy to, you know, do well because he did play really well last week leading up into this tournament. And I think he won by like a few strokes. It wasn't just like a playoff or one stroke and it was, you know, down to the wire. He was playing some uh-huh. really good golf. made some really good shots. So it definitely is possible. He's won the PGA Championship, I think, a few times, right? I think he actually won in Valhalla like 10 years ago. Or something like that. I, yeah. just, I just watched like the rerun on Sunday or yesterday. And I didn't realize. Well, you, I've never seen Rory McIlroy in person, but like he had like the the the, the Nike flat bill hats that they had back in the day. Like the, the like the like the, the best Nike hats ever made were those ones. And I didn't realize how tiny his head looked in those things. Like it was like a tie, like a toddler was in those hats, dude. It just did not look right at all. But we'll see. If there is a good chance for Noem, it could be now. But again, it could be messing with them even more with everything that's going on now. A divorce is a lot different than a broken off engagement. You know, there's a lot more money. And does he make the jump to live now that he doesn't have to go 50 50? I know a lot of people were talking about that as well. So, yeah, there was, there was a lot of there was a lot of stuff that's kind of saying that he's going to take out $800 million, you know, <laughs> yeah. buyout. And it's just like, I, why not? Right. I mean, why not i I don't know i just but what what a what a better way to kind of stay you know kind of keep your mind off of what just what's what's entailing in your life than playing around the golf right Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. rory i don't know rory rory can be he's a great golfer but he can be really scary when he's like in kind of like a in like a low point i guess i guess you could call it right like when he's got something set on his mind, he definitely does play his, his best golf. Um, but when he's on, it's like he's he's like Scotty Scheffler esque recently. Recently, you know, he's just hard to beat when he's on. But he's just been so inconsistent. 
and that has been the issue. Uh, yeah, definitely. I um, I agree. I mean, so kind of going into Scotty Scheffler, someone mm-hmm. was saying like, is he ready for the player? Is he ready for the players' championship? And it's like someone posted a video of him at like a twenty-four hour fitness playing basketball. Playing, playing basketball. You saw that too. <laughs> you saw him playing. So he's, he's got. I think he was rocking like the. Uh, what, it was like a golf shirt. It was some kind of like golf yeah. course shirt. Um, but I mean, yeah, going over to Scotty Scheffler, and a lot of people were. Oh, you know, Scotty's an Instagram running. There's no issue. I'm like, he's my competitive golf in two weeks. And it's not just like going on vacation and maybe, you know, golfing for fun or whatever. You have a infant. And if that yeah. infant doesn't sleep well, nobody sleeps. And yeah. I'm sure, obviously, he could afford, you know, uh, uh, a nanny, you know, if needed. Uh, but I, yeah, or <laughs> au pair. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, but it's so different. You know, and you understand the grind of having an infant. I understand the grind of having an infant. And there's so much that's going on. You know, you're yeah, a brand new I'm, baby, you know, all these things. Yeah. I'm really curious about that. Like when parents, when parents hire au pairs, like right out the gate, right? I mean, you're talking babies just a few weeks old, right? They have some, they have a maid, right? Who's in the house, who's cleaning up the house and doing stuff. But to have an au pair, like, do you think that that takes away from like the bonding in those first few weeks? Of, oh, definitely you know, I mean, think so. I mean, the doctor, I mean, I just remember taking home Adelina and like the, the doctor was constantly like, Hey, if you're going to, if you're going to hold her, take your shirt off, go skin to skin. So she knows it's you mm-hmm. like get her familiar with your sense and whatever it may be. And it's so like, it's so funny now because it's like, she sees my computer open. She mm-hmm. comes over and she goes like, hello hi hi because she was so used to sitting like right here in her little rocker right yep. and, and me being on business calls and she would sit there and just be like now she like has to be on my lap looking at the camera i have like i have like these uh i got these these markers uh-huh. because <laughs> my desk is like i could take notes and stuff on my desk mm. and so then she and so she just draws circles. She draws like <laughs> her little her little lines, and then people are just like, "She's so well behaved." I'm like, "Oh yeah, but you should see my desk. Like my desk yeah. is just all the notes I had gone." <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, but yeah. I mean, to you know, going back to what we we're talking about with Scotty Scheffler, if he does have that, like, I'm really curious as to like how that you know how that impacts the the bond between your kid. Hmm. For sure. I mean, yeah. I mean, because you know his wife's probably not going to be there until maybe flown in on the last day if he has a chance to win. But even then, you know, the baby's probably not going to be there. And if the crazy thing, like you, I don't know about you. Like I remember when we had our son, and you know, you you love him. You obviously love your child. You know, like, but like you don't really have that much of a connection in the very beginning. Because it's just crying or or sleeping, right? Crying or so there's no reaction, there's no smiles, there's no laughter. They don't, they can't see, they're not tracking, they can't, you know, there's so many things that they don't do that it's just like you don't know if you're doing good. The only time you know you're doing good is if it's quiet. You know, you just okay, it's if it's quiet, okay, everything's good. But if he starts crying, well then okay, everything's bad. And it takes a little while for you to finally feel like that, oh, like that connection actually hits, right? Because it takes a little bit of time. And when they finally start laughing, they finally start smiling when they see you, then your heart just freaking melts. And yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to see how Scotty Sheffer plays, you know, first time as a dad, first major as a dad coming off the last major of the masters. I mean, I do have him in, in this one, like random draft Kings. I do. I picked, I picked Scotty Scheffler, Roy McIlroy, and like a, bunch of shrubs just to like say hey if these guys can pull it off that'd be that'd be pretty freaking cool uh but yeah i don't know yeah man i don't know uh, like you know kind of kind of elaborating further off of your part right it's like we we were the ones who were constantly going and and like getting like waking ourselves up and like pair and like just pure paranoia just like look at the camera okay she's good right she's good or i'd like go in there and just like put my finger underneath her nose <laughs> it just seemed I could feel her breathing. Like, yeah, I mean, I know you hate me mentioning this because you always said in the beginning, but Adelina was just the best when she when it came no, to No, I sleep. don't like, hate it. Obviously, I just wish Carter was a better sleeper. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I had nights where I literally would like, I'd pop out of bed and I'd look at Stephanie and I'm like, where's Carter? She'd be like, he's in his 
he's in his like crib right next to you. Oh, dude, dude, no, like, I. Oh man, I used to get like, I used to literally jump like straight up jump towards towards Isis because I would think that that the baby was falling off the bed. I would literally have nightmares about it, and I would dude. jump. And she'd be like, she'd be like, "Will you relax?" <laughs> oh my like, god, I'm so dude. sorry. Dude, that was that was. I've had some but, funny ones. Ugh. Yeah, <laughs> but stay. But I mean, dude. Speaking of speaking of golfing dads, right? Like, bro, how crazy! It, Anthony Kim is responding to us on Instagram. I know. Well, dude, okay, how so crazy it, is that? So, dude, I, I've been a, I've been <clears throat> rooting for Anthony Kim ever since I really heard about him because I wasn't so into golf back when he was tearing it up back in the early 2010s. Uh, mm-hmm. But ever since he's come back, like like we've been talking about how I've been. A, we've been rooting for him, right? Rooting for the, the him to get back on track and, you know, play, get up to that uh, type of golf that he played. But I was talking to one of my buddies about like Anthony Kim and, and he's like, dude, he he's my buddy's like Anthony Kim kind of reminds me of like that dad who just got Twitter or social media, but he's famous <laughs> and he doesn't know that he doesn't have to respond to everybody, you know, but yeah. because, like if it was just you or me who got on there, not many people are going to be commenting besides family or friends, right? That are like, "Hey, right. your baby looks adorable. Oh, you guys look cute in this photo." Yada yada. People, you know, you're not going to have trolls that are commenting. But all he gets are trolls because there's a bunch of keyboard warriors out there who live in their mom's basement that are mad that he got however much to play live, you know, and not obviously play as well as some of the other players are right now. But to his like. Not like to his credit, like he's barely played like in, over the last yeah. year. So he has a lot of rust to get off. And it's understandable if you know the context of where he's coming from. But all these mm-hmm. trolls, man, he's I'm on I'm on Twitter, man. He's always responding to these trolls, dude. It's hilarious. Just these clapbacks and responding to everybody liking things. And he's like, he's awesome. And I, yeah, I was surprised that he responded. I was like, hey, yeah. you know what? That's the one way I can DM him because I, I can't on Twitter. You have to like allow it where I, it's either... You can either open them up, or if they if someone follows you and you follow each other, then you, it's automatically open. But on Instagram, yeah. yeah, I'm like, yo, man, we'd love to have you on a podcast. It's, I'm sure you have a lot of time on your hands right now during this break, you know. Um, and I was surprised he he responded, but he was really really nice about it and actually kept the door open. Well, that's the thing. I think I think for him right now, just where his golf career is at, he's trying to he sees the environment that he's in and it's different, right? Like think of Bryson DeChambeau. All you hear about Bryson DeChambeau is he's just the nicest guy all the time. And it, and I, and it irks me that that time that we last played, we saw him and like, I didn't like, no one took the opportunity to just be like, Hey Bryson, what's up, man? You know, like no one apparently took the opportunity. Was, cause... Apparently he was here last Monday, but I didn't oh, really? really get out. Yeah. 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 But I mean, still it's, you know, it's just, it's again, it's just one of those things where I think he understands the different, like, the different environment in which he's in, right? Like he's in a, mm-hmm. like live is a very social, it is a very social environment. Everybody is chirping. Everyone is talking. You're on the range. You got music blaring. You got people, you know, at tournaments who are, who are doing performances on the first tee. Like there's all kinds of different things that are going on. That is, it's different. You don't see mm-hmm. that. Like even at the Sony, you don't see people doing hula dances or Island, you yeah. know, Island dance. Right, like, right, right. As, that tournament nobody does mm-hmm. that it's just like oh my god they're playing um um what, what's that what's that course called uh Walea? no um oh kapalua kapalua sorry they're like yeah. oh my god they're playing kapalua like we're gonna see some big drives it's like no nah, man like hawaii hawaii is a place that is full of like you know um it, it's it's full of culture you know like mm-hmm. the island oh, yeah. you're talking generations of of amazing culture that's been passed down and everyone lives by it right like you're grateful for the island you're grateful for what it gives and that's kind of the amazing thing of seeing live being in other countries you know from going to india to going to australia to going to singapore it's like you're seeing all these different cultures in real time that you don't see with the pga Mm -hmm. because the pga is focusing on the players like Mm -hmm. they're really embracing what these cultures are and like and the and the audiences that are there and what they appreciate appreciate about the game and also what live is bringing to them yeah you know it's mm-hmm. it's cool man it's and i think for him he sees that right anthony sees that and he's just he just wants to be a man of the people right i mean mm-hmm. think about i mean i guess if you were to say someone who's like a man of the people on the pga would be like max homa max homa 
messes around with people jokingly when they are like, oh, hey, Max, what do you think of the swing? And he's like, don't oh quit your God. day job. You know, like, he goes in on people, but still mm-hmm. it's like, I don't know, man. I, I just think it's, um, I just think it's cool that he, that he responded to us and, you know, it's just like, well, you know, I'm not really looking to do podcasts right now for a little while. I just want to focus on like, you know, what I got, what I got to take care of. And it's like, for sure, man. We, we get it. Do do what you got to do, brother. You know, mm-hmm. get out there, have mm-hmm. fun, like do your thing. <laughs> right. And just to know that he looked at it, read it, took the time to respond, not just like yeah. seeing it and then like, you know, brush it off, which I wouldn't have thought anything less of him if he did, because I'm sure he gets DMs all the time. He sees a long oh, DM from this random. Well, maybe not as random because he had commented and responded to a few things on our Twitter. You know, so he might have like recognized that, but like, uh, sure, you get blown up with all these trolls on DMs. You just, you just like, okay, I don't want to read these things. Uh, yeah. But, you know, I mean, yeah. So back on the live train per se, Taylor Gooch, he is in the PGA Championship. He was given a invite. And how well do you think he's going to do? How well do you think, I don't know, do you think I, he'll I think... make the cut? Do you think he'll make the cut? Let's start there. It's hard. It's hard to say, dude. Like Valhalla is not an easy course. You know, like it. I mean, it's going to be pure. Like they, I saw today on uh, ESPN Plus, like they were saying that the greens are going to be rolling at like a fourteen. Like it's good. Bro. It's going to be glass. It's going to be glass out there, man. So, you know, without without being without being an a hole, it's just you know, Taylor, if you're listening to this, like just go out there and control shot by shot. Like that's all you can do. You know, you got a lot of pressure on you because you opened your mouth and, mm-hmm. you know, you said, oh, well, is the PGA really as competitive as it is without, like, players like us there? It's like, well, here's your chance, bro. Like, you got you got a lot of the top dudes who are in the PGA who are still trying to stick it to, to live by saying that yeah. we're the real deal, you know, and mm-hmm. we're going to continue to be the real deal. You got a divorced Rory who's coming in who's going to be bringing a lot of fire. You know, it's just kind of like – you better just you better you better just be able to put you know put your money where your mouth is. I mean, imagine he wins. What Ooh. what happened? Like, will like Brandon? Will like Brandel Chambly's oh. head explode? Like, oh, yeah. what would happen oh. if if he wins? I think I think if he wins, Rand- Randall Chambly is going to call out sick on Monday talking about, <laughs> yeah. talking about the tournament. <laughs> I, I, gar- I imagine. guarantee. Imagine. Oh my! I mean, just goodness, imagine. Like- from, imagine if anybody from Live wins. Imagine if well, no, 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 not not just anybody, because like you, you have John Rom, he's great, you know. But like, but no, it's like to me, it's got to be Taylor Gooch, because he's never won a major. I don't even know how many majors he's been in when he played yeah, for the PGA. But like, it couldn't have been more than one or two. And on top of that, like everyone has just been sh- like trolling him. I think like what was it last week or the week before? I told you, someone was like, oh well. He's in the PGA Championship. I thought he didn't want to play in the major. I'm like, dude. He said he wouldn't want to do like the uh, what do you call it? The qualifiers. He didn't want to go through the qualifiers. Obviously, he will play in any major that he gets invited to, but he didn't want to go through those steps, thinking that he was good enough to do that. And if he wins PGA Championship, would that make him automatic qualifier for the uh, U.S. Open? I think so. I think he get yeah. I think it's like an exempt for like a few years or something like that for all the majors. <laughs> yeah, I that would so. be wild, man. Oh my! I mean, I just want the best players to play. I don't care what it, where it is, what tournament it is. If they have to all go back to the PGA, if they all go to live, or they create a uh, an elite league or something like that, I don't care. I just yeah. want the best of the best because that's where the go- that's what's entertaining, man. Like I don't turn on PGA tournaments that often anymore unless. I really just don't. I mean, the, I mean the unless, high, unless it's a major, unless right? It's a major. I mean, major and maybe some of the elevated events, but even then, it's like there's so much luster has been lost, you know, mm-hmm. from just no rom, uh, you know, no rom, and you know, no rom, but you know, you know, Brooks kept <laughs> Dustin Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no i i get i get it man there's you know it's uh it's different but yeah i think that's you know that's the one thing everyone's everyone's gunning for for everybody yeah (laughs) pretty much 
I'm trying to think who else who else really talking about playing well besides Scotty, obviously Rory, Taylor Goose. I'm not really talking about him playing well, but I just think it'd be hilarious if he if he pulled it out. I mean, Max Homa coming off that really really well played Masters, and I think his first major that he actually played really well in. Uh, really, I'm really pulling for him too. You know, I, I would love yeah. to see Max Homa win a major as well. Like you said, he's a great dude. Ultimate troll on Twitter. I'd love it. I think he's like the original like golfer that like the, like the man of the people, you know, like he would just respond to people yeah. and uh funny dude. Seems like a good family dude. Dad as well. Uh, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, who else on your radar could maybe steal the show or maybe take home the P2 championship? If Phil did too, dude, that'd be insane. Yeah, Phil, but see, so like going back to what you said, so I've been watching more <clears throat> of the of of the live events mm -hmm. since Phil's put that live put that lab putter in his bag. He's rolling the rock, I think, better than I've ever seen him in his entire career. Really, and he's not <clears throat> he's not short off the tee. Nope. Um, by any means, I mean the dude still has probably the best short game out of you know in history, but. Um, and I know that's a bold statement for those of you that are gonna that are listening to this, but I'm just saying, you know, numbers don't lie. He's throughout his career, he's always really been a great yeah. wedge player. Yeah, yeah. And so, I would I wouldn't count him out. Um, I definitely I think Brooks is you know anytime that Brooks steps on steps onto a PGA event for a major, he's he's definitely someone you can't count out. Here's a wild card. I'm 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 taking I'm taking Ricky. Ricky's been Ricky's been playing pretty. He decent. played well in like the U.S. Open yeah. last year, and I mean, like yeah. he's definitely played a lot better over the yeah. last year. So, and I okay. and, and I kind of think that that you know Valhalla is a is a course that I think he can he can definitely take a little advantage of, and and you know it kind of plays perfectly to the type of game he's accustomed to playing. You know, like I mean, it's a long course, so. He may have a lot of full shots in where most where most of the longer hitters maybe have to kind of choke down on a club, you know, put a little extra action on it with a cut. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's I think it'll just kind of play right to him. Um, Wyndham, you know, yeah, Wyndham. Can't, yeah, Wyndham will will be there if he doesn't lose it. Um, and <laughs> you know, we got we got a. We got Michael. We got the great, the great fairy tale Cinderella story uh, of Michael Block coming back as well too. And he, I mean, he his interview. It sounds like he's pretty, he's pretty focused. He's pretty locked in. I'm calling you it know? now. He's not going to make the cut. I'm calling, <laughs> it. I'm calling it. All right. But I'm, I mean, still, I mean, they, still great to was, see him. Still was it last year? Him. Was it last year? or The year before? When he last last year? Was it really? Are you sure? I think so. Because I remember we were in Monterey for that, and it was rainy. I don't think it was see. that. I think it was two years ago, dude. Was it? Which is crazy to think about. I know, man. I've been so off with time. Or maybe it was. No? 2023 PGA Championship. Yeah. It was. Like okay. Last okay. Yeah. It just feels like it was like not last one for whatever reason. But, I mean, that was a wild story, dude. I mean... Cinderella a hole in story. one, a hole in one, dude. Like yeah. slam dunking it's it. In it's in the hole. Oh my gosh! And then no, like, you're lying. You're lying. Shut up. Great I'm shot, with, Rory's over there. Like, I'm playing yeah. with Rory. What? Yeah. No way. You yeah, I think me. man, that that guy, that guy must have. I, I do have to say, like, he, I, he cried he a lot. He cried a lot. <laughs> oh yeah, it's very like emotional, man. Oh my goodness, dude! Like, I mean, I, I mean, I get it. You know, it's the story around him, right? Like, dude, mm -hmm. guy, guy made more money than he's ever than he's ever made in his entire career. Well, how much as did he a, make as a PJ? How much did he uh, make? Yeah, the payout maybe. Was he top ten? Yeah, well, he finished tied for fifteenth. Uh, so a couple, couple hundred thousand for sure. But you got to think, he got he got brand deals, right? I mean, Canes like. He brought all kinds of all kinds of popularity to to the club. Of course, and, yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I mean, dude, he's he's on everything. Like, he's he's. You saw his name on the wall, right? That he was like, "Hey, we're out here," and he turned the camera and it had like his like face on like the billboard yeah. in the back of the. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll root for him. You know, I mean, of course, but uh, <laughs> I felt like I got a little carried away with some of the interviews. But I mean, it's to be expected. No. Yeah, it's some. Fun I mean, how would you, I mean, put yourself in his position. How would you? How would you overall react? It's it's hard to say that you you be calm, cool, and collected when it's like I mean, it's a very like it's every person's you know fantasy. I mean, you're right. I mean, you're talking. Yeah, cool. I mean, I was to say like it's calm, cool, and collected is one thing, but like kind of like talking out of your butt a little bit. If I had Rory's long game, well, then I'd be, you know, I'd be right there. I'd win so many tournaments, and it's like, okay, well, if I was six three, if I was six four, two hundred twenty pounds, and you know, I was really strong, had a whip of a swing and I could putt really well, then yeah, I'd be really good too, you know? But I don't know. I remember it was, I was like me and, uh, oh man, what's uh, Golf Dads? Uh, what's his name? Golf Dads? I'm blanking. Athletics? Ace? Oh, Zach. 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 Zach Neal. I was going back and forth. And it's like, yeah, I'm kind of getting a little annoyed at this guy. It's like, yeah, he's kind of going overboard a little bit. I mean, he's enjoying it. But, you know, it's like, how many cocktails did he have before this interview? Get a little too comfortable, a little too confident, you know. Uh, I don't know how I'd be. I mean, I would probably just be hunkered down, like, leave me alone. I, I did amazing. I made leave a lot of money. Alone. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know, man. I mean, I think I think everyone's entitled to – I think everyone's entitled to that, to that moment and definitely – Last year was his moment, man. He was on top of the world. I mean, what are you, what are you gonna do? You know, so, guy came yeah. out and guy came out and showed out. Like, played played the best in his in his words, the best golf he could have played, and still tied for fifteenth. Like, put it into reality a little bit. You know, I know that's crazy. Yeah. Wow. But yeah. So let's see here, Bahala. Let's see what other golf news that we have going on. So, do you know who this Dune, Dune guy is? Dune, is it is it Dune for the PGA Tour? Nope. Let me see what's his name. Jimmy Dune. He apparently uh, resigns uh, the PGA Tour's policy board effective immediately. Apparently, he's leaving the. Oh, here we go. Perfect. People also ask, who is Jimmy Dune in golf? Jimmy Dune was one of the architects of, of the tour's shock framework agreement with PIF, which was announced last June. Wow, it's already it's coming up to a year. Wow. And the intention of combining the commercial operations of the PGA Tour and Live and the DP World Tour. Oh, wow. If he's leaving and he's the one who kind of set the framework, then what does that mean for the deal? I would assume that the deal would be kind of like kind of crumble and fall away if he's not involved and he's the one who kind of put everything together. But Man, I don't know. I mean, like, did you hear? Um, apparently, John Rahm was talking about how he still feels it's like he's like a member of the PGA Tour. Did you hear about that? Like in his interview? Mm-hmm. Um, well, you'll probably see it all over Twitter or Instagram or whatever. But Croc, I think, is it? I don't know if he's in the, No, not Crockett. Uh, Johnson Wagner. No, Johnson. Guy's name's first name is Johnson. Johnson Wagner. I think his name is Johnson Wagner. Maybe. Wagner Johnson, whatever it is. Anyway, he's commenting on John Rahm, who's like, I want to wring this guy's neck out, man, with how annoyed, like, you're not part of the PGA Tour, man. Like, you don't get it. You don't get to come back. And it was just like, dude, like, relax. Like, I know you're mad that he might have the opportunity of getting $400 plus million while you're getting paid a maybe fifty dollars to $150,000 to comment on him while also come back to the PGA Tour. But I've never seen an announcer or a color commentator just get so irritated on camera with how they really feel. <laughs> it was just like, dang, dude, who gave him the blow before hopping on camera? Like, calm down, bro. I don't know. I like if any if anybody kind of holds a little bit more weight who's in live would be him. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's contributed a lot to the PGA. He's really built, you know, he's built a solid resume with the PGA. If he did want to come back, like who's going to turn him down knowing what he brings. Right. And think of it this way. It's, it's a, it's a, 
it's a marketing opportunity. You're going to get a lot more views. You're going to get people who are going to pay more attention to it because of the fact that it's like, it's John Rom, mm-hmm. you know? Yep. Um, again, I think some of these things are just, just to kind of stir it up a little bit, but of course, of course. you know, um, I, I don't, I don't see why anybody would tell, you know, I don't see John Jay Monahan being like, yeah, you know what? Like, you kind of blew it here, buddy. Like, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll think on it. <laughs> Jay's going to be like, yeah. Um, do what do you want? Sure. Yeah, we'll do it. We need you here. <laughs> right. And I'm just, I'm just double checking to make sure that I got the correct player. Uh, no, I'm wrong. It was Aaron Overholzer. John Rom's comments infuriated PGA Tour winner and Golf Channel pundit Aaron Oberholzer. If I'm saying the name right, ahead of the PGA Championship. Let's see here. Uh, what are exactly the comments? Uh, so apparently John Rom said, so you guys keep saying the other side, but I'm still a PGA Tour member, whether suspended or not, he said. I still want to support the PGA Tour, and I think that's an important distinction to make. I don't feel like I'm on the other side. I'm just not playing there. And Overholzer said he just doesn't get it. To this day, he just doesn't get it. And this is the guy who wanted a position or wanted to be heard from what I understand, either a board position or policy board. He wanted to be heard on this whole thing right before he went to live. And I feel like he hasn't heard as much as he probably should. I feel like he wasn't heard as much as he should have been. And now I'm glad he wasn't in another position because he does doesn't get it. As a PGA Tour player and a PGA Tour member still carrying a PGA Tour card and someone who supports the PGA Tour who is not happy with this right now, obviously, but the PGA Tour supports, I'm licensed by that, quite honestly, blah, blah, blah. You still don't get it. You took Liv's offer, and you're going to just sit there and tell me, oh, you still feel like a PGA Tour member? I mean, I want to wring his neck through the television. It's like, <laughs> bro, okay, like, it's I don't know. It kind of reminds me of like a a player on a like a, a football team, let's say baseball team or whatever from the Yankees. You know, play there fifteen years, goes to the Red Sox, and the fans are like, "Oh, how can he say he still feels like a Yankee even though he's, he went to the Red Sox?" Like, it's the money, dude. Like, there's no loyalties anymore. Everyone knows that in any sports. There used to be so yeah. much loyalty growing up. You know, players would play for a team for like 10, 15 years and never leave unless there was maybe like, you know, it, like very rarely would players leave like they are now. It's just where are they going to get paid? Who values them more? And it's nothing personal. And too many people are taking things personal, especially in this case, at least in my opinion. Yep. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't really have anything else to comment on that. I think. I mean, you hit it right on the nail. <laughs> I don't really have anything else. It's, you know, <laughs> you got. Right, I mean, well, you got. No, yeah. go for it. No, wrap it up. Wrap it up. Unless you have nothing to say, that's fine. I got nothing, man. I, I don't really okay. know what else to say there. Besides, it's just you know, if you were to think about it, like, like work, right? We know that work's not going to invest in you. So sometimes you just got to leave and find yourself a better deal, right? I mean it. Yeah, it's scary because you think about any work, any job. If you were to pass away today, tomorrow, your your job is going to be on the market tomorrow. Yeah, They're not playing twice. Well, yeah, you know. What yeah, I, mean. mm-hmm. I know what you. Mean. Uh, but so, uh, my eyeballs are so itchy. Nah, I know. I get. It. I'm just getting emotional on me again. It's all good. I know. I know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but this uh, this weekend, uh, Don Julio and I are finally getting together to get around a golf in. Super stoked about it. Carmel Valley Ranch. Shout out to Patty at Patty O'Shea at Upside Golf. Uh, we're hoping to get around it with him, but they got the member, a tour member, no, member guest event that they got going on there this weekend. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Don Julio and I are going to get a lot of golf content together. Finally, it's been about five months, man, about five and a half months since we played around together. Uh, yeah. And, uh, Still trying to figure out exactly what we're going to do, but I think we're leaning towards, I was just telling him off air about a T flip challenge, which I've seen a lot where you have a two man scramble and you both play your shot and then you flip a T and whichever person it points towards, you take that person's shot unless you hole out or putt and hit, hit your shot in the hole. And you obviously take that shot on the front nine and maybe a, a, a match on the back nine or 
We can try to do a little break 50 series, me and you on the front tees or something like that. I don't know. Regardless. Break 50? Okay, we're, we're, so we're going to, we would, okay, hear me out. So the break 50, it's traditionally 18 holes, but we would just do it for front nine, not break 50, but we would just double our score and that would be our score for the, you know, that would be, yeah, obviously, yeah, gotcha. I wouldn't do that because. We, if we don't break 50 as a two man scramble on nine holes, man, uh, I was gonna hang say, up our cleats, man. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, dude. I mean, I know like this is a first time, this is a first time course for both of us, and mm-hmm. I've only I've only seen Carmel Valley Ranch, I've never I've never played it, but you know, um, apparently it's 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 a course you got to respect, so you know, yeah, um, hopefully they got some yardage books or something just to kind of. Give us an idea of like, yeah, I'm bringing my upside or, golf. Uh, what do you call it? A uh, range finder, range finder. Help me out yeah. there. Yeah, I'm uh, bringing mine. I'm bringing my speaker. <laughs> I'm bringing, ooh, here we go. I'm bringing my thunder stick. <laughs> yeah. All right. Bring my phone, my phone mount, my phone, Let's my magnet phone mount. <laughs> dude, it's gonna be gonna sick, have, dude. It's gonna, it's gonna be, be like, a, it's, we just gotta put the banner of upside on their golf cart. Just <laughs> yeah, pretty this, much. Right. This round, this round is sponsored by Upside. Oh, dude, we should just mention that for <laughs> in the beginning of the video. We should. We yeah, should. I'm sure he wouldn't mind it. No, not at all. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, I honestly can't wait. It's gonna be cold, uh, at least for me, because here it's like low is 90s it? this whole week. It's supposed to be like 59, 60, 58. Um, not much wind. Not terrible, but. Um, and I think it's pretty secluded course, so it's you only really feel wind regardless because you know the trees. Uh, but it'll be the first time we'll wear pants in about two weeks, uh, so it'll be interesting to kind of prepare to make that drive and tell myself it's going to be cold, make sure to pack cold, <laughs> don't pack like it's 95 degrees. Yeah, outside. I mean, I'm, not- I mean, I'm gonna be. I mean, I'm gonna be on the road all day, so I'm just gonna get down there, take a nice, easy. Take a nice, easy uh, drive through the one. Just enjoy the scenery, and then, uh, and then just haul butt home. I guess. Like, yeah. Me and Isis are gonna go to the Luke Combs concert the night before, so. It's, uh, it, Make it's sure you be... have all the correct shafts in your clubs, okay? None of this. Oh, I forgot. I was messing with the club, and I, I messed with I my driver the... shaft. You know. Oh, not again! Yeah. I forgot my driver yeah. head. Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> oh. Yeah. No, definitely, definitely haven't tweaked with anything. Just been messing with putters, but we'll see. Yeah, for sure. Anything yeah. else you want to touch on before we wrap up the podcast for today? No, nah, man. Um, yeah. Just excited, excited, to, excited to uh, watch some golf this weekend and play some golf on Sunday. So it'll be a good time. I agree, man. I agree. And uh, if you guys haven't already, please check us out on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, or Twitter. Uh, we're up to like 780 subs on YouTube. I think close to like 1600 on uh, TikTok, and I think we're we're, we're slowly gaining traction on uh, Instagram, like 170 or something followers. So definitely follow us up there for more of our content off camera, off podcast, and uh, hope you guys enjoy. But thank you guys for listening to our podcast and supporting us. Don't forget to stay flat and go low, and we'll see you guys next week once we have a Valhalla winner. Take care. Yep. Take care, guys.